Demon Slayer episode 6. Aren't you going to be a Hashira? Not sure Genya's gonna make it to being a Hashira. Genya not looking too hot. <laughs> Click, finish them off. Don't let them dialogue. I just keep, I don't know, just keep trying, <laughs> keep slashing, just slash away, couldn't hurt. The way this show gives me anxiety, like, so often recently, they, they take these moments of leisure in the most critical times. But I have no ground to stand on criticizing people for talking too much at key moments. There's another one. And level up again. How long until they start regenerating, though? Okay, at least he's somewhat in control. He's not, like, rampaging. Kenya's gone rabid. But he's usually so so calm and kind and collected, and Tanjiro loves it. <laughs> wow, that is the most Tanjiro moment of all, all Tanjiro moments. He's just genuinely happy for him. <laughs> what is going on? This is bizarre. Yeah, what a shock. If only we had, you know, if only we had time to do something about them while they're crawling around on the floor. Hi. <laughs> no, the triumph of the last episode. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot. We have gun. Gun makes everything better. I wonder what his emotion is. That's pretty badass. Damn, which is fine though. She's got the same strength that they do. Oh, he launched her to a, a tree. Nice, so he's still able to use the fire? That's so cool. That's what Tanjiro does. Yeah, he, he levels up mid-battle. Damn, he's making it look easy now. <laughs> yes, exactly, that could fit into Tanjiro's character description. Wow, this is so great, man. This is so great that for once, you know, the, the demons are afraid. They still have the advantage, they're still stronger. For them to feel fear from a human, it, it feels like a major turning point, even if just spiritually. Damn. It's not the most visually appealing attack, but... It's still pretty devastating. Yes, you are right to be afraid of the the bullets. Oh, we got him. Oh, he's a tiny, he's a tiny little demon. Aw. <laughs> Just blasting it. Shoot him! No, he's, he's fast for a little guy. It's like a little, little rat. No, too easy. Whoa, that is not what I expected. We go through swords in the show faster than the Demon Slayers go through recruits. At first when I saw this little guy bawling his eyes out in the woods, I thought his emotion would be sadness. But we already have a, a sadness demon out of the five, right? But he's hiding and running away, so maybe it's uh, fear. Which would be interesting because aside from it being a first glimpse at his character behind the, the demon form, his human character, because I'm sure we're going to get a sympathetic look at some point after he's dead probably, just as you're enjoying the sweetness of his death right on time to feel bad about yourself. But it's also interesting that it seems like the other emotions stem from this lead personification of fear. Not sure I totally buy this, but you know, there's that classic idea that there are only two emotions, love and fear, and that all other negative and positive emotions stem from those respectively. There's that whole scene in Donnie Darko about that. I think you could make a case that that's true. Anger typically comes from a threat, whether it's a physical threat or safety threat or an identity threat, an ego threat, trying to preserve some kind of internal state that someone's threatening. Jealousy, maybe as well. You know, jealousy, I think, only occurs when you, you don't feel like you, you have or can get what you need for yourself. You know, if you have everything you need or feel confident you can get everything you need, you're very unlikely to feel jealous of other people. Sadness, I think, is a little bit tougher to make that case but maybe in some instances. And I guess this demon also has some emotions associated with positivity, like joy, and you could make the case that you can experience those things from the abatement of fear. I think what brings this to mind, though, is that Tanjiro is being, like, extra loving this episode as, like, the other half of that. And so in this episode, we have perhaps what is, like, the 
demon form of fear and then it's other emotions that stem from that plus Sandro who just like cannot see anything but love like he cannot even look at a person without his eyes glowing with affection <laughs> I don't know why it's so hilarious, he's just like shooting this little guy. Oh no, he's having flashbacks. He's dead. It's over. Maybe something will save him last minute. Something can save him. Something... Someone? Oh, cute little kid Genya. It's, he's dead. <laughs> it's over. Sorry. And flashback. <laughs> Character exposition flashback. And she went on to turn her fortune around and make a lot of money, live comfortably for the rest of her, her days. No tragedy happened. That settles that flashback. It's like Genya she's shielding or, her, or his older brother. So big family. That's Kenya. It's all by the, the Mohawk. I'm sure a lot of the responsibility and pain fell on Big Bro. Despite the fact that he's obviously suffering in this household as well. Kenya seems pretty sweet up to this point. Nothing bad is going to happen, of course, so why would his personality change? Don't get excited. Lower your expectations. <laughs> Oh, it's a demon. They wanted to become a Hashira. They wanted to become one. Big bro's there. Even expecting tragedy, I didn't expect that. The one who needed to lower expectations was me. Holy crap, that's horrific. That's so, that's so messed up. That's... They just wrote a big family so that they could wipe them out. It's like, you know what's better than having one mom and one brother killed? Having one mom and eight brothers killed. Reminds me of the, the that scene with the gun gun demon in Chainsaw Man. Mom was a demon? He didn't understand. I'm sure his older brother understood that. Damn, his own mother. Yeah, gee, I wonder how he felt. Genya's mom is a very brief character, but it, it is in keeping with a lot of the, the demon lore. One of the things I like most about the demons in the show, where there's always or almost always a parallel to something human about sinking into the depths of, of darkness. You can kind of guess or extrapolate or create a narrative around why she would turn into a demon in this household and also attack her family. Not to say she didn't love the, the kids, not to say she didn't do her best to take care of them, for most of her life, but they were undoubtedly a burden that she suffered for. I imagine it can feel like there's no relief for you in these situations. You know, there's no one up above you to whom you can ask for help or guidance or can lean on. It's just all you all the time with people looking up to you with mouths to feed, in poverty, taking beatings from dad who eventually just died, which is probably a blessing and a curse simultaneously for her. Just day in, day out, that grind. You can understand metaphorically how there can be a weird mix of love and hatred there, as uncomfortable as that might be to think about. And also losing all his other siblings. So what happened to the big brother? I may have missed that. It's a lot to take on, very mature. But realistically, there's some limits there, right? Speaking of uncomfortable things to look at or speak about, the father's death is interesting to think about in terms of the mom, just because he was a monster, as they put it. Physically abusive, it's highly possible because these things happen. Despite that, the mother was in love with him and he was her only adult companion, who may also have had moments of kindness and helpfulness. You know, people are complicated. I can see the kids being relieved by his death. I can see the, the mom being both relieved and devastated by the father's death. And I have a feeling the way they're writing it, the father's death is, is linked to the mother's turning. Now I'm even more curious about the significance of Genya seeming to have demon properties. <laughs> Oh, 
photographic shot. This is a pretty long flashback. You, you know, you might have had time to dodge. Whoa, I think I just missed something very, very, very critical. His brother is currently a Hashira. Damn, Hashira turns you like that? That's crazy. I mean, I knew they were surly, a surly bunch, but it's a big change. Actually, I can take a guess. I mean, this is all about them protecting each other, protecting their family, feelings of failure at protecting their family, obviously. They made this now together, but it might be that the older brother is pushing Genya away and not wanting him to become Hashira because he's all the family that he has left. And yet another example in this character's very short screen time so far of him taking on the full burden of everyone as the, the older brother figure and surrogate father figure. Damn, that speed though. Wow, very fitting thing to say. Watch your back. He smelled it. Something really cool about that attack. Genya, Genya, it's Genya's turn. Oh, he just got blasted by that? I thought he was gonna dodge it. It was Genya. That, what? That's a. Oh my god! He is full of holes. Yeah, okay, but he has some regenerator. Regenerative, pa bleh, regenerative power. It's not over yet. Tanjiro once again creating these these circles. Tough to leave. Gone. <laughs> Gone to the rescue once more. It's I don't know. It's so like weird and cool, but and creepy, hilarious, terrifying. He's just a little dude. He's just a little little demon dude running through the forest really fast, just scuttling along. To lose another sword here. I don't believe in Tanjiro, I guess. And it cuts off. Damn it. That was a very interesting episode. So while I think the last episode was more intense action and was really fun and satisfying, this one I think had a little bit more of sort of emotional exploration, character depth. Obviously, Genya's backstory, which I think actually is setting up for something bigger. In fact, I'm kind of so convinced of that that I would be surprised if Genya actually ends up dying here now. I've just seen that flashback because this is setting up for something with the brother. Then again, it's Demon Slayer, and sometimes these things don't get a chance to be borne out through actual character meeting and dialogue. Sometimes they happen through flashbacks and kind of mid-death self-analysis. But anyway, this episode did a lot. We get the reveal of the fear demon in control of the whole thing. Genya's backstory, finally some humanization for him, which also characterizes his big brother, the Hashira. Tanjiro just being, you know, his usual Tanjiro loving self, which no matter how many times I talk about it, no matter how, how many times I see it, it still surprises me with its intensity. So overall, really fun episode. How long is the season? It feels like we're, we're kind of flying by here. Genya, I'm full of holes. Anything I eat would just leak out of me, like a Looney Tunes cartoon. He'll warm up. If we, if I say we're friends, we're friends. We are friends. That's that's settled. Give in to the Tanjiro power. Just give in to his influence. That's what I love about him, and it's what you will learn to love about him as well. Love will win over fear.